we're going to install Exchange Server 2010 on the virtual server. What we've got here is the, the server that we've promoted to being a domain controller. Um, so once again, I'll just remind you that installing Exchange on your domain controllers is not a best practice. Um, if you do have enough uh, resources in your training lab that you can separate these servers into different virtual ser virtual machines, um, by all means do so, but um, for training purposes, if you do need to install Exchange directly on the domain controller, uh, it is fine, it just isn't the best practice in the real world. Now, the first thing we're going to do in the Server Manager console here is just modify the Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration so that we can go online and download a few things. Um, I'm just going to turn it off. I, I think it just gets in the way in a training lab, so I'm just going to turn that off completely. Okay, we're all done with the uh, Server Manager console there. Fire up Internet Explorer. And this is the first time you run it, you'll just have to skip through this wizard. That's fine. Okay. Now, one of the Exchange MVPs named Pat Richard has written a uh, really useful PowerShell script that can be used for uh, automating the installation of the Exchange Server 2010 uh, prerequisites. So, we'll go to his website, which is uh, helloworld.com uh, forward slash 152 is the article. Okay, so here's Pat's website with um, his set Exchange 2010 features script. Uh, so just scroll down, grab the latest version of that. And we'll just save that very quick to download. It's only a small file. Once you've got that, just uh, get it out of the zip file. I'll put it in my C, uh, C drive. Uh, I always make a folder called scripts to store this kind of thing. And we'll just put it there. Okay. Uh, next thing you want to do, just open a PowerShell window and navigate to that scripts folder. Now, to run this script, you just want to double check that your PowerShell execution policy is set. Uh, correctly, so just run get execution policy and as if okay, it's set to restricted. So, uh, in this case, the script won't run. What we'll need to do is use set execution policy, and I'll just change that to uh, unrestricted for this server. Once again, it's a training lab, so it doesn't really matter too much make that change and you can run get execution policy again just to verify that okay I'll clear that so now that the execution policy has been configured correctly you can run the set exchange 2010 features script uh, run once there we go right so here's uh, pat script it's just got a whole bunch of menu options so the server we're going to install here on the domain controller is going to be is what is known as a typical uh, exchange server. And so that's a server that has the uh, client access server, hub transport server, and mailbox roles installed. And we also want, uh, we do want RPC over HTTP. So what we'll do is we'll pick number six, install typical CAS hub mailbox prerequisites. One thing I'll just point out here as well, um, client access servers uh, also need this net TCP port sharing service started. Um, so by choosing option six, we can see that that's automatically set for us as one of the um, as one of the options that will automatically set that. And also the uh, 2010 Office System Converter, uh, which is the Microsoft filter pack, uh, that's a, a set of filters that can be used by the Exchange. Um, indexing search and index services to um, index office content uh, that is in uh, email attachments in mailboxes. Uh, so that is also included automatically when we choose option six. So I'll go ahead and choose that now. Okay, with an internet connection available, 
Okay, there's been an error there. Didn't install the filter pack. Just cancel that and try again. Let's change directory summary. So I'll go back to scripts and just try again. I have had a problem with my internet connection there uh, temporarily. Option six again. Okay, a little bit more like that time it's managed to start the installation, uh, start the download of the uh, filter pack file. All right, so that's run the second time without any problems. Um, now we just need to restart the server before we can install Exchange. So uh, that option is number 98 in the menu. That'll reboot the server for us. All right, after that restart, log back onto the server as your administrator. What we're going to do next is install Exchange 2010 itself. So I've already um, copied the Exchange 2010 with Service Pack 2. Uh, installation file to this server and extracted it into this folder uh, called ex2010sp2. So within that folder all we need to do is run setup and here's the exchange uh, server 2010 setup splash screen. Um, these first three steps here are automatically taken care of for us so we can go straight to step four install Microsoft Exchange. Okay, Exchange Server 2010 setup. Uh, you can skip through this introduction, and of course, there is a license agreement which you'll just need to accept. And there's also an error reporting option here. Um, this one's really up to you. I'm just going to leave this on no for now. Okay, now we choose the installation type. So, um, as I already said earlier, we'll be doing a typical Exchange Server installation. So, that includes all of the mandatory roles hub transport, client access mailbox all on one server as well as the exchange management tools. Um, I'm going to install to the C drive to the default path and what I always do is tick this box uh, to automatically install Windows Server roles and features required for exchange. Now the, the script that we ran um, a few minutes ago should already have done that for us um, but I always tick this box anyway just in case. So once you have with all that uh, just click next and since this is the first Exchange server going into this Active Directory Forest, you get to choose an Exchange organization name. Um, first organization is fine. There's certainly a lot of organizations out there called first organization. I'm going to change mine just to boot camp. Um, you can really call yours anything you like. Again, this client settings uh, question here relates to having your client computers running Outlook 2003. Um, primarily this will mean uh, this decides whether uh, Exchange will install a public folder database by default uh, or not. Um, and if, there are a few other things as well but, um, but primarily it impacts whether that public folder database is created. So I'm just going to say no because I, I don't want uh, that public folder database created by default. Go ahead and click next. Now if you're planning to point uh, or open up your Exchange server to the web uh, for things like Outlook Web Access and ActiveSync, you can give it a uh, public name uh, here because this client access server will be the internet facing client access server, um, which I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to use mail.exchangebootcamp.com. Uh, you you could choose your own domain name here, so mail uh, whatever your domain name .com is. Um, you could also just leave it blank. You can configure all these things later. All this does is sort of pre-configure uh, a few options um, in some of the Exchange Server components for you. 
but they're all things that you can go through later on and fix up anyway so don't get too hung up on this if you're not sure which domain name you want to put in there the customer experience improvement program uh, that's optional I'm just going to leave this one out for now and what will happen now is setup will do uh, this series of readiness checks so it's just going to confirm that your server and your Active Directory environment and everything else are ready for the installation of Exchange Server 2010 so just wait a few minutes for that to finish it can take a little while um, and as long as everything is either uh, successful or there, may be, there, there usually is a few warnings present especially when you're installing on a domain controller um, but as long as there's no fatal errors or critical errors um, you'll be able to go ahead okay that readiness check is now complete um, so everything here is either a green tick or just a warning uh, to let us know for example that the um, Active Directory schema is going to be uh, extended there um, the warning about being on a domain controller and just repeats that warning for the other server roles as well so you're ready to go ahead and hit install and exchange will actually begin installing on the server so again this can take um, quite a while as well especially if your machine is a little bit on the slower side uh, it has got quite a lot of work to do extending the AD schema and prepping the forest and domains uh, and then installing the exchange files themselves uh, so there's a lot of work going on there behind the scenes so you can just walk away for a few minutes if you want to or you can stay here and watch it it's really up to you but it, it will take a little while to finish okay now the installation has uh, finally completed you can see if you scroll down here all of these tasks uh, have green ticks you can see all the things it did installing the management tools and all the different roles and um, what we need to do now uh, is uh, I recommend you just clear this tick box here because you don't want the console to start up automatically at the end of this and click finish and um, there will be a restart required so just go ahead and restart your server and when the server is finished restarting uh, you can go ahead and continue with the next lesson